I'm Rebecca Wishnia, and I'm a violinist and violin teacher. I was born here in San Francisco to a family of cellists, professional cellists. So I grew up surrounded by a lot of different musical rehearsals and lessons and all different types of activities happening in my house. And I began playing piano when I was four. I really enjoyed musical activities in general. And so when I was 10, I began studying violin in San Francisco. And from there, I pretty much never stopped and went on to study in college as well. That's the only thing that I've ever known is to have music playing all the time, whether it is someone actually practicing next to you or somebody listening to a recording. Oh, I think I actually originally wanted to play flute and we didn't have a flute. It's always just been the way of life, so I don't know how it is for it to be any other way. Good, can you draw me an E over here? Great, and now I want When to you teach this. and you're seeing a student who has a problem, you have to think on your feet to solve that problem. And that same kind of thinking that you do to fix it applies to your own practice as well. So. If I'm teaching a student and they are having a hard time getting a certain note, they can't find the right note, and I have to think of a digestible way to explain it to them. Then when I go on to do my own practice for a performance, those words are echoing back in my head of, okay, why am I missing this shift? I just told somebody that they needed to do this. Maybe I should try the same thing. I feel a lot of pressure um, when I'm teaching young kids. You might think that there's less pressure if they're not going to go on in music. If they're going to study something else in college, you might think that it's more relaxing, but I actually find that the opposite is true. Okay. If I know that I'm sending a high school student to some great music program, they're going to get so much more instruction. What I have told them is only the beginning. If I'm teaching a student who I know is going to completely change gears when they go into college and they're not ever gonna take a violin lesson again, there's so much that I feel I need to tell them. In playing violin, it's so difficult and so detail-oriented. There's so much information to give. And every day I think, oh my gosh, I haven't even gotten to this technique or we haven't even studied this piece and they have so much more to do and we only have 45 minutes a week. So I have taught a few students in some capacity who have gone on to study music and that feels amazing. It's incredible to watch how they grow. Um, somebody can make amazing progress from age you know, 15 to 17 if they put their mind to it. Open, a little bit more relaxed. Let's put it so let's go right on your end. Right now I think I have 18 students, so that's more than I've had in the past. And I'm actually hoping to build up even a little bit more of a studio. There'll be a piano, lots of music, bookshelves, of lots of great violin books, and the students will come to my house and take their lessons with me there. My schedule changes a lot on a day-to-day -day basis, and that kind of keeps it exciting. I think that music is just my favorite thing that there is whether it's listening to it or playing it or teaching it, all that really matters to me is that I'm surrounded by those sounds. So I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing to keep my life in that direction.